John here guys and today we're talking about the run cam thumb the thumb sized camera with a pinky sized price only $50 for this 1080p HD camera. You're probably gonna see a lot of videos of people strapping this tiny 10 gram camera to a bunch of micros, but we're gonna do things a little bit differently today. We're taking it on a track on a full size five inch racing quad running freedom spec at the world famous Houston Nice Bot that has no battery on board. You actually supply power to it through a little connector that puts five volts from your flight controller. That allows the weight of this thing to be under 10 grams. The other thing that it comes with is this little printed thing and this other little tiny case. Uh, I do actually have it in the printed sleeve right here and I have mocked up just zip tying it to this fin and it actually works really, really well. You just put your SD card in the back, meaning it already can have more storage capacity than the $300 plus Insta360 GO 2. Now, is the footage gonna be as good? We found some people locally were pixel peeping and they're like, hey, that's not as good as the Runcam 4K that costs twice as much and weighs six times as much. It's not as good as the Insta360 2 that costs six times as much and weighs twice as much. It's not as good as the GoPro 10 that costs eight times as much and weighs like a hundred times more. No, it's not. But what it is, is something small enough that you can attach it to a very small quad that couldn't necessarily carry something before that you wanna send into treacherous places or just get something going in the air. A 75 millimeter whoop could hold it no problem. An Emacs Tiny Hawk like this could hold it no problem. But what I'm more interested in is putting it on a race quad like this Open Racer Pro. You see, I've designed this little fin that has the mount integrated into it so that I could easily pop the camera in and out. Now, a lot of times with our GoPro quads, we end up having to run a special mount or a special pod with it. That means you end up having like one GoPro racer that's a little bit heavier, a little bit differently sized, that flies a little bit different than all of the rest. Well, this way you can have a quad that is the same exact pod, the same camera mount, the same antenna mount, and I can swap the fin if I don't like it, or I can just leave the fin in there because this only weighs a couple grams heavier than the normal fin. And 10 grams on your waist quad is not going to impact. Now, a lot of times we'll, we'll do a GoPro round of racing so they can gingerly fly through the track because the extra 100 plus grams of a full-size GoPro Hero really negatively impacts the way that your quad flies and you have to fly it a little bit differently. This means that you can fly the exact same way. 10 grams is not going to impact a racing quad very much at all so you can fly the same way the same speed and you could even fly it on the track with others if you really wanted to because at fifty dollars the price is almost disposable um that costs about the same as the flight controller i have in this quad right here so very very affordable very cheap very nice <laughs> Now, it does come with a little indie filter. The lens on the front is super replaceable, but it's not super tight. I wish this thing fit on there. I did have a little bit of crash you're gonna see in the race footage at the end of this thing, and I did lose the little SD card cover. It's not fitting on there very tight, so maybe one cam can improve that. But even with this just zip tied, to this stock fin when I first tried it. It was wobbling around. You can see a little bit of the jello, but it's not bad. Now I flew this, I forgot to put the ND filter on here that it comes with. Um, so you can see it, the image is a bit flat, but I like that because it's easy to grade. We're gonna show you some footage of me just doing about a 15 second color grade on here. All I did was kind of adjust the lift and the gain in order to bring a little bit more shadow detail, uh, reduce some of the brightness a little bit, a tiny squidge to the contrast just a little bit up and a little bit more saturation. So I got the greens just like the greens that were there at our track location. And it flew surprisingly good. So this mount 
um, having it lower to the center of gravity, having it thicker so that it won't wobble around should reduce the jello even further. So hopefully this can show you guys a little bit of the design process. The initial zip tie to the fin version was a proof of concept before we decided to devote design hours. That actually worked fairly well and applying a little bit of foam actually got the jello to a reasonable amount, but knew we could do a better and more permanent job. So started in Fusion 360 and came up with this first, trying to kind of combine the mount with a turtle mode fin. Uh, but then people were pointing out like one, it would probably be a little bit less jello if I moved the mount closer to the pod. Now this beautiful pod is actually Limon's design and he has the files open source and a template so that you can design your own fins. And so it was a good exercise for me to do. So I thought that, yeah, this probably won't be able to turtle mode that effectively. So I went ahead and made this version that brings everything closer to the center, um, allows you to match that camera angle. In my case, I'm going at 45 degrees, allows easy pushing of the button and plugging in for power and um, it just fits very nice. I also added a little bit of extra material around the front and the top so that in a tumble, you're actually not hitting the camera lens at all like this. And uh, I did do a couple of tumbles and not a scratch on it. So that design principle worked and it kept the weight low. Well, it looks better than an HD Zero DVR. It looks better than DJI. Even during competition, you could throw one of these on and if you end up crashing and breaking it, it only costs you 50 bucks. So just do a couple of GoPro rounds, get that footage, that footage, that footage, and fly the way that you wanna fly. Save your $400 GoPro Hero 10 for when you're freestyling and not going to fly in a sketchy place. Don't necessarily put it on one of those long range Flywoo Explorers and risk losing it out at sea if you fly something disposable, your footage won't be quite as good, but if you're not selling that footage, do you really, really need the top of the line? There may be instances where you might want one versus the other, and now you have the option. I will say the Runcam 5 4K footage is still a bit better. It's 4K versus 1080, but this costs twice as much and weighs six times as much. So there will be instances when I have a full five inch freestyle quad that I don't care about the weight that I'm gonna wanna fly this. And there are instances where I have a micro, a two inch, a three inch, a four inch, a five inch, an ultralight, a tiny whoop, or a race quad. And now I have a legitimate option. I reduce the image quality but I increase the flight skill that I can exhibit during that lap because I cannot fly a quad with a GoPro Hero on it the same way I would. So I'll have nicer looking footage, yes, but my lines and my speed won't be the same. Now I can have that and you can have it too on your micro for only about 50 bucks. <laughs> was an awesome flight yeah, this thing awesome this flight. has audio too so <laughs> yeah I was watching oh, the line 
right. Yeah, this is who I was just battling right here. I Check him out. Right side, <laughs> nice, nice. Right. That was some great battle. Yeah, that was a great battle. <laughs> that was awesome. Now the, real, now the real question is how slow were you going so that I could keep up with you? Well, I felt like 70%. 70%? Like 70%? Yeah. That's so pretty I, good. I,